Welcome. Welcome to Modern Monday, where I take a look at a movie from the 2000s or 2010s and get a review. And in finishing up this franchise, we're going to take a look at Indiana Jones and the Kingdom of the Crystal Skull. We have made it. Even though I did, pff, started doing it yesterday, but okay, so when this movie came out, I was very interested, so I had to rewatch all the other three. So I was ready and raring to go, and we got to this. Okay, so just so you know, I'm a Harrison Ford fan. I like Star Wars, The Fugitive, Indiana Jones films. I'm a Shia LaBeouf fan. I think Disturbia is one of his most underrated films that he's done. Eagle Eye is also pretty good. The first Transformers movie isn't that bad, and I'd fair to say that Transformers Dark of the Moon isn't too bad either. So going in, I'm like, okay, they got Shia LaBeouf, stuff like that. Okay, give it a chance. So, I remember being glad that I watched the other two, because at this point I've only seen the second one. Because it connects back to the first film, and bringing back the character of Marion Ravenwood. So, the story is that Indiana Jones, or Henry Jones, whatever, is now an old man. His father has passed away. Marcus has passed away. And he is visited by Muck Williams, who tells him that a, a colleague of his, named Oxley, has left notes pertaining to a crystal skull. Uh, this Oxley, played by John Hurt, lost his mind years ago when he obtained the skull. And it's Mutt's mother who was contacted to help. And she has sent out to contact for the contact Indiana Jones. And it turns out that it was a trap because the KGB are hot on the trail. The first intro sequence has Indy and Mac going to Area 51 to track down something. I don't remember what it was, but it's something. But Mac turns on him and goes with the Russians. And that ends up tying into the story. It turns out that Mutt's mother is Marion Ravenwood. Ravenwood. In the first film, and it also turns out that Mutt Williams is actually Henry Jones III and is Indy's son. And there's, a, you know, I like the whole thing where, you know, he's telling Mutt at first, you know, drop out of school, that's fine. And then once he finds out he's his son, he's like, no, you're going back to school, you know. Uh, they actually asked Sean Connery to reprise his role, and he declined. Denholm Elliott, the actor who played Marcus, actually passed away. And that's why I think that the scene in which the statue of Marcus Brody's head pops off is a little bit uh, disrespectful. Although I do like the expression that Indy has when it happens, where Mutt just kind of smiles and he just goes. So it kind of shows you, you know, respect your elders, boy. Uh, the villain in this, played by Kate Blanchett, Nah. Uh, she's fine for what we needed, but she's not really important to the plot. You know, she's there. She's there as a foil. And it has that Indiana Jones trope of getting caught more than once. And I'm, I'm sorry, but it's stupid. It's kind of funny how it happens because he tells Oxley. See, what happens is. Indy and Marion get stuck in quicksand. So he yells at Oxley to go get help. And Oxley's out whacked out of his mind going, Help! Help! And he runs off. And who does he get? The Russians. Kind of funny. It's kind of funny. But what is this all leading to? Right? This whole movie leading to... Well, it's hinted at throughout the film. And I'm shocked that people call it a twist... Because it's not really a twist to me. Not really. People say, oh, I hated the, the alien twist. It's not a twist. They choreographed this from the beginning. Indy is at Area 51 in the beginning. And that's revealed that's where the Ark of the Covenant was taken. It was Area 51. The skull 
the crystal skull is not human shape. It's oddly shaped. So right away, you are told this is not going to be normal. So the fact that people get pissed off at the alien twist blows my mind. Not that they get pissed off, but that they think it's a twist. It's not a twist. It was choreographed from the beginning to show you this is not a human type problem we are dealing with. And while the first time I watched it, I wasn't exactly sure it was aliens, I knew it couldn't be something normal. And it it begs the question why people think that this ruined the Indiana Jones franchise because it's not grounded. Kalima! Kalima! Shakti Day! I'm not sure. I'm not sure. I'm not sure. Come on! It's not the first time we've had supernatural stuff in this franchise. Hell, the Ark of the Covenant had supernatural abilities with it. The Holy Grail can restore life. Not that it worked for John Connery's character, but I'm just saying. And they say that Aliens is going too far. I think it fits. I think the Aliens fit in the world of Indiana Jones. With all the other supernatural, supernatural stuff, it fits. Where it goes wrong is that their search to find out with the skull goes nowhere. They don't get anything out of this other than they see aliens. That's it. And Oxley gets his mind back. That's it. You know, in the first film, they found the Ark of the Covenant. They proved that it existed. And the CIA took it. The second film... They saved a civilization and many, many children. You know, the third film, they found the Holy Grail, something that Henry Jones Sr.'s life was all about, and it saved his life. Here, they just returned the skull to where it is, aliens showed up, flew away. Yes, they know aliens exist, but unlike the other three things, they can't prove it. Indy could have picked you know, they know that the Ark of the Covenant exists, right? Any knows the you know, they know that the thing exists, but they cannot prove that aliens exist unlike the other stuff. You know? They can't just write down, oh, aliens and be like, What? With all the other stuff, that's probably the most unnatural thing in this film. This film takes place in the fifties and there is a chase in which it started when Indy tells Mutt to punch some dude in a Letterman sweater. And it begins a standoff between the greasers and the jocks, so whatever. And it, that's very 50s to me. I was like, oh, okay. Very 50s. Shia LaBeouf in this film. He's not bad. Like I said, I actually like Shia LaBeouf. And... I understand the hate you have for him, and he kind of ruined his career for a while there with this film because he said such bad things. What is bad in this film? I remember I mentioned that the green screening in the first three films was very noticeable. Here, it's not noticeable, but everything still looks very, very fake. The CGI in this film is horrible, and from the get-go, you are shown this with a little gopher that pops out of the hole. And it keeps popping up throughout the film. And then you have Shia LaBeouf swing, swinging with CGI monkeys. You got CGI ants. You got Kate Blanchett CGI burning her face out. Especially when you have such special effects in Raiders of the Lost Ark that came out in 1981 that had better effects than this film that came out in 2008. It's horrible. And Steven Spielberg, for God's sake, he released... Ready Player One, and it had better special effects than this. It came out 10 years later. I mean, come on. And even when they're in the jungle, most of that stuff was filmed on location, and it still looks fake. And I'm not, I don't hate this film like most people do. I don't hate any of these films at all. But to me, this is the worst one out of the four because... Uh, and it's not anything about the plot. Like I said, aliens don't matter to me, you know? 
I've been to the sci-fi alien aspect thing. That's fine. And I think it fits in with Indiana Jones. What bothers me is that they didn't take care to try to live up to the... To live up to the legacy of Indiana Jones. They bring in Mutt as he's supposed to be his son. And then they do this little gag at the end where he's going to pick up the hat and put it on. And while, no, he shouldn't put it on. I think that they shouldn't even have put that scene in the film at all. Because he goes to put it on, you're going to piss off fans when he goes to put it on. And then he just puts it on, you know. And then Indy just takes it and puts it on his own head. And it's like, okay, well if you were going to do that, why have the scene in there to begin with? That's what always confuses me about this film is... He's trolling us. Spielberg is trolling us with that scene. Like, hey, oh, oh, no, no, he, no, no, he didn't put it on. But why? Why have the scene in there other than to try to piss off your fans? You know, it's no. Now, this is a little controversial, but I think it would have been okay if he put it on. Because to be honest, I wouldn't mind seeing a Shia LaBeouf led. Indiana Jones continuation. I know. I know. Hate me. Throw stuff at me. Fine. But I wouldn't mind it. Because like I said, I like the actor. Now, he ruined his chances. And he's probably not going to be in the fifth one if you ever get one. And to be honest, I think it's time that we did have a younger Indiana Jones. And rather than recasting him with someone like Dylan O'Brien, like I've heard rumors of, Shia LaBeouf probably would have been all right. As long as the script was written well and not him screaming a million times like in the Transformers movies. All in all, this film is not that bad. I'm going to give it a 7 out of 10 because of all the problems it has. But it's not that bad. It is the worst, but it's not that bad. So what are your thoughts on Indiana Jones and the Kingdom of the Crystal Skull? Let me know in the comments below. Make sure to like, share, and subscribe. Thank you for watching. I've been Scotty. I'll see you in the next one.